Coming up on show 908, Tesla just updated just about everything. Stick around, I'll give you the details. Plus on the show, the Cupra Leon plug-in hybrid gets reviewed. The Mitsubishi Eclipse is a new plug-in for Europe and vehicle to grids gets better with ABB. Well, a couple of announcements before the start of the podcast today. Tomorrow's Saturday special interview will be with a, an expert on the Norwegian market. We know that Norway is far ahead of us. Uh, some months, 75% of new car sales have plug sockets on over half of pure bevs. So what can we learn from Norway where you are listening around the world? Uh, you may have heard me talk about e-mobility Norway before. Jan from that uh, has been doing this for more than 10 years. Leading expert in Norway on uh, electric mobility, has put chargers in, was there when the first DC fast charge went into Norway. So there's nothing he doesn't know. Going to pick his brains tomorrow. And also, uh, check out my Twitter to celebrate our 900th show recently, all next week. A chance to win a £100 Amazon voucher or local currency equivalent to you, or even a charity donation if you want, uh, along with our premium partner EV Review Ireland. All you got to do is just check out my Twitter, uh, do a little retweet, subscribe to the YouTube channel for both of us, and you go in the draw. Uh, that'll be next Sunday in uh, about eight, nine days' time. So look out on my Twitter for that. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for Friday, 16th of October, last one of the week. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story. So you don't have to. Oh, my goodness, did Tesla just update just about everything. Over the course of this week, we've had two price drops for the Model S, and the first one went down to about $71,000. The next one was 69420 which was Elon's tweet and we thought that was going to be the big Tesla news of the week but they finally finally confirmed officially what we know we'd been talking about for a while now because people have seen cars leaving the factory and stickers on window windscreens and stuff like that and oh hang on why has someone got more range on their model X they just took delivery. Well, hang on a minute. What's that new center console in the Model 3 snapped through the window of a parked car in the factory? Well, now we have all the details. It's all official. Those cars are real. All the rumors, as far as I can tell, are real. I've seen Electrek website today talking about a heated steering wheel. I don't think that's true, but if I've uh, missed that one, then please correct me. I'll keep an eye on uh, that website and uh, what they're talking about. I think that's the only thing I've seen, the only rumor heated steering wheel uh, that isn't true. The rest of it, holy moly, let's go through it from beginning to end. The latest Tesla Model 3 benefits from a series of ongoing quality and efficiency improvements, the most notable of which is the introduction of the Model Y HVAC system into the Model 3. So the Model Y comes with something called a heat pump. My Renault Zoe has a heat pump. My tumble dryer has a heat pump, a way of exchanging energy in the air that's particularly useful in cold climates because rather than using resistors, resistive heating elements to heat up the air, which goes into the cabin, you can use a heat pump, much more efficient. Also, the Model Y has this thing you've heard called octo valve which diverts the heating and cooling around the car for the passenger compartment the electronics the battery etc and so this has been moved into the model 3 a few weeks ago we heard the model 3 trunk at uh, front got smaller and moved forward making room behind it for something what could it possibly be well now we know surprise surprise it was the model y's heat pump configuration well uh, combined with that and new tires there's new tires across the board on all four, you know, S3, X, and Y. There's other improvements to the powertrains, there's software improvements. Model 3 has beaten its own record as the world's most efficient mass production car. Where do we start? Okay, exterior. Okay, let's start with exterior. What is known as Chrome Delete, in other words, the bright work, is all gone. You can't really delete it if it's gone in the first place, so we'll just call it satin black side repeaters, door handles, and the bright work. All black, looks more stealth, looks funky. It's subjective. Some people like the chrome. They think it looks premium. I like the black. Personally, now that it's all that, that, that chrome has gone, I because I always thought, you know, like a Tesla in white looks good and it's the free color as well. So bonus. Actually, now all that's gone. If you have it in stealth black with all the uh, the chrome delete stuff and then maybe you tint the rear windows or something, oh, you would look amazing. Um, yeah, I'm like the least gangster person in the world, but... 
even I could look 1% gangster. <laughs> uh, there's new wheel and tyre updates. They've changed to using more efficient tyres across the entire range, and that has helped get more range. There's new 18-inch aero wheels, still called aero wheels, but a new design. There's new 19-inch sport wheels, and there's the new... If you get a Model 3 performance, so, you know, top of the range, top of the line, you now get 20-inch Uber Turbine wheels that have been kicking around for about four years and fans have wanted them forever. And they are incredibly efficient. They're a little bit heavier, by the way, but they're incredibly efficient in terms of the aerodynamics. And so that explains some of the increased performance. There is the much-requested power lift boot lid opening at the touch of a button on the trunk itself or from a touchscreen or uh, inside the car or the Tesla app, you can open the boot. Inside there is updated trim. So if you look at the pictures uh, on the new design studio, you'll see a matte black finish replacing the gloss piano black finish, which I think was universally pretty much dis disliked because it was a scratch magnet. What you can't see in the pictures, but I believe to be true, you get satin black sill plates now, you get graphite finish on the seat controls, and sort of metallicized or metalized scroll wheels on the steering wheel. Again, I've not seen that reported anywhere else, but I believe that to be true. Uh, the new sun visors are magnetic closures to snap back into place. There's a redesigned center console with inductive charging mats for two smartphones, and which sort of kind of sort of kills the third party uh, market which was out there for these kind of things so that now comes in the car updated front compartment with a sliding lid there's two additional USB-C ports and get four USB-C ports now and an additional USB-A that's this sort of old school oblong shaped one in the glove box now why do you get it in the glove compartment because that's where you're meant to put your storage devices now so with uh, on Tesla's there's sentry mode and dash cam footage and they get recorded onto a USB stick or a you know, portable hard drive. And you can now do that by popping those devices into the glove compartment. More convenient, obviously safer as well, because if somebody breaks into your car, the cameras are running, you've got all the footage, and for them to then smash their way into the glove box, you know, it's not impossible, it's not a lockbox, but it takes a little bit longer, and opportunist thieves will be, will be put off that. And of course, you can't get in the glove box now easily without the, the pin code to enter. And so... Hopefully, that is a great added piece of safety and security. Now, I'm going to give you the UK numbers, because that's what I've memorized. Uh, the Model 3 Standard Range Plus went from 254 to 267, which is a nice bump. The Model 3 Long Range went from 347 to 360, nice bump. And the Model 3 Performance went from 329 to 352 bigger bump to a 23 mile bump on that prices here start at uh, 40 and a half thousand pounds up to 56 and a half thousand pounds actually those are wltp figures it's great they've gone up but if you look at the the us design studio which of course has the epa range also updated today the jumps are much much bigger the, the model 3 long range has added 10 percent of its previous range and so that is now well over 350 miles on the epa which is always a little bit less than um wltp way of measuring it and, and all of this is you know not real world of course but some big jumps and so the only car because the the model s and the model x and the model y have range increases today that means the only car tesla sell with less than 300 miles of range any way of measuring it is the model 3 standard range plus which here over here is 267 miles and even then you're like 30 odd miles off of the 300 so elon saying recently he thinks 300 miles is the new minimum it's really interesting that the their whole range apart from one car only this is the only one that does less than 300 miles that is a, a real challenge for other car makers other brands who will be walking into dealerships and going online and thinking what to buy tesla really are going out there to uh, to make sure that people think that having 300 miles is, you know, the minimum. It's the, it's what you need to achieve. And I don't think it is because, you know, all cars need a use case. But that's a different subject, right? Most people, I don't know, aren't at that stage of thinking about EVs yet. So it's a challenge for the competitors to Tesla. And and well done. Can't I, You know, I can't not say well done to the team. There, I try and keep this podcast 
brand agnostic. I try and praise everyone equally. But when something like this happens, like 10% extra range, that's mega, 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 mega. Like some car companies are, you know, eking out another five or 10 miles of their EVs and Tesla had 30 miles. Wow. Um, of course, all of these things come from a range of improvements. And that feeds into the next story today, Model S and Model X. Also, are the beneficiaries of continued improvement, hardware changes, software changes, the core hardware and the architecture in the systems are constantly being improved at Tesla. And although they don't do model years, it is kind of, you know, nice timing that in October Q4, uh, this will would have otherwise been a model year 2021. Not that they always say we don't do model years, we just put but uh, put improvements on the car as and when we find them. Okay. Um, so, again, significant mass reduction is what I gather is one of the reasons behind S and X going further. So they're still using the 18650 form factor cells. Panasonic are improving those alongside Tesla. And also, they are managing to get weight. Tesla are getting weight and mass out of the S and the X. Significant reduction, actually, in places. Increased drive unit efficiency and maximizing the regen braking as well. So, again, I'll give you the numbers from over for over here. Model S, long range plus 405 miles, which is mega. Uh, the Model S performance, only, only nine miles less, 396. So, you know what? It's a 15,000 pound difference here. So, it's it, to go from the long range to performance it's on, a, on the S, it's a 15 grand difference. Now, it used to be that the long range really was, if you looked at the stats only, would go much further. The performance would give you that extra boost. So, it was a case of, well, do I want the range or do I want the performance? And making a trade off, you know what? You're trading off nine miles. Just get the performance. If, you, if you're spending 75, spend 90. I mean, I'm, I'm not swimming in that pool because I haven't got 75 grand or 90 to spend. But I think that will encourage people to go for the performance. I genuinely do. I think it'll nudge them. They're like, well, what's the downside? 15 grand, obviously, is one of the downsides, but I'm not losing much range anymore. And the same for the Model X, long range. 348 performance 340 eight mile delta on that again spend the 15 grand and and go model x i mean okay it's almost six figures again it's 98 grand here uh almost the same as the u.s prices uh, despite uh, currency conversion so uh yeah absolutely fascinating what they've done today and we're not finished because the model y gets better the long range dual motor model y in the u.s goes from 316 to 325 and the key is the performance model y goes from 291 to 303 over that psychological 300 mile benchmark wowzers well done everyone there at the team uh, for working on these and uh, getting them out into the market for q4 i definitely think a few people that might have been holding off making a model s purchase thinking was there is there a, is there a you know a new interior around the corner i think that'll just push them into buying one now i think maybe in the next six months to a year sure we may see a bigger redesign alongside the plaid there's no doubt the model s plaid version will not look like the out it can't it has to be entirely redesigned it'll use the new 4680 cells uh, the new way of making cars a tesla at the end of you know in 12 months time and so that model s plaid edition will not be the car that is pictured on the design studio because they've just put an s in that picture <laughs> you won't be getting that car you'll be getting and i think they might use that opportunity in 12 months time to redesign s and x you know, I, I don't know any more than that. I'm spared. That's pure speculation. Uh, the By the way, one thing I did notice today, in the design studio, the interior pictures of the Model Y don't reflect the updated 3, as in the new center console. It's still the old one. I wonder if that is going to change soon. I mean, it wouldn't be an oversight. Uh, they're, too much, they're too pro for that. But I wonder if there is a kind of using up old stock or orders or contracts to be fulfilled. I don't know. I thought the interiors of the cars, those kind of things are very similar. So anyway, uh, we'll wait and see. Shall we move on? Wow, that was huge. Thank you for bearing with me. I've just rehearsed that so many times today because I could have got lost in the weeds, and I hope I didn't in that. 
This isn't a Tesla podcast, <laughs> but I know you want to know the news because it's a big deal. Right, let's move on. And Evo Magazine, which I love, uh, has a new review of the Cupra Leon e-hybrid. It's plug-in hybrid, and like the old Golf GTE and the new Golf GTE, the Cupra, which is the performance bit of Seat, is using a 1.4-litre petrol engine and an electric motor, 148 brake horse from the engine, 113 horsepower from the electric bits, and a 6 speed a dual clutch transmission a 13 kilowatt hour battery pack and 32 miles of uh, range on the all electric power says evo.co.uk who reckon a 20 to 25 mile real world range is more like it the five cylinder growl pseudo five cylinder growl i should say in sport and uh, cupra modes isn't too bad as it ramps up the drama uh, they say the outright pace is brisk enough but the electric and petrol elements always seem to be fighting each other the electric motor doesn't quite have the power on its own for satisfying EV thrust, and yet the motor takes a little bit of rousing and several beats longer than you'd hope, says Evo. I'll pop a full link in the show notes. And, you know, I mentioned this yesterday. I'm so 50 50 on plug in hybrids. In some ways, the perfect compromise. In some ways, the worst compromise. Just buy a full electric car, for goodness sake. It's almost 2021. There's enough choices. Um, but I get it. I get it both ways. I don't know. Right, let's move on. Another plug-in hybrid. The Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross plug-in hybrid is Mitsubishi announcing the redesigned Eclipse Cross, available in selected markets in Asia, Europe, and Australia. For the first time, as a plug-in hybrid with a modified version of the drive system in the outgoing Outlander plug-in hybrid. I say outgoing because Mitsubishi aren't staying around here in the UK, but they probably are in many other places, so I'll be careful what I say. According to Electrive, sales of the new model are scheduled to start early next year. Japan, Australia, New Zealand and Germany are going to get the Mitsubishi Eclipse. And at this point, no plans to bring the plug-in hybrid version to the USA, sadly. Mitsubishi not providing performance data at the moment, but it's basically the uh, the the powertrain from the Outlander, albeit with modifications to match the chassis, so that would be an indicator for what kind of plug-in performance you're going to get. Fiat Chrysler are investing up to $1.5 billion to build EVs in Windsor. Uh, the story today is the assembly plant in Windsor in Canada to build electric vehicles, part of a deal with Canadian auto workers Unifor. Uh, the news came out yesterday. According to Autoblog, the auto union said FCA would invest in state-of-the-art vehicle platforms that will enable assembly of plug-in hybrid and full electric cars with at least one new model in 2025. The announcement comes less than a month after Unifor said Ford would be investing $1.46 billion in its Oakville and Windsor plants. I'll pop a link in the show notes to read more. Neo is viewed as the bellwether of the Chinese EV industry, and they narrowed the gap with Tesla in the last month. Mainland China's high-selling electric car maker is Tesla at the moment, over the last three months. And according to the South China Morning Post... Uh, Neo, which started back in 2014, had a really good couple of months. Uh, they delivered 3,200 of their ES6, which is the SUV, a year-on-year -year increase of 87%. And that's in August was up 58%. Tesla, on the other hand, have been leading uh, by quite a distance, by a margin of over 8,000 vehicles last month. They delivered 11,300 of the Model 3s built at their Shanghai-based Gigafactory 3. In June earlier in the year, the gap was wider, though. So Neo narrowing the gap a little bit, but Tesla still way out in front. And, of course, Model Y coming out of Shanghai very soon. Customers are now getting the very first, the last uh, week or so, the very first of the Standard Range Plus Model 3 is coming out of China, uh, which use the new LFP cells. So lower energy density, less performance, but cheaper to do. And actually, I've seen a story around today that uh, they're advising people to charge to 100%, which is very un-Tesla-like, who don't say that at all. So I wonder whether... Either that battery chemistry can cope going to 100, or maybe they've put a buffer into it. So 100 really isn't 100. Hmm, do some digging. Right, final story, and I love a bit of vehicle to grid. I love it. Vehicle to grid just seems like such an amazing idea that it should, should, it should be here now. It should be everywhere, but I guess... I don't know. There's some complexities to it that we haven't really uh, worked out yet. But I really can't wait for more people to be doing vehicle to grid, vehicle to home. And as part of the contract with France's DREEV, DREEV, a joint venture between EDF, Electricité de France, and Nouvelle 
who have been on this podcast before. Mark Trajon from Nouvet was here a couple of years ago to talk about what they're doing with V to G. Uh, they have uh, done a deal with ABB, very famous name in the EV industry. Uh, ABB will be supplying them their brand new 11 kilowatt bidirectional chargers specifically for vehicle to grid. ABB's solution integrated with the Dreef software enables EV drivers to export surplus power back to the grid and a potential to generate money every month. Vehicle to grid reduces the total cost of ownership and further boosts the adoption of EVs. Bidirectional charges also help smooth the flow of uneven generation of electricity from renewables like solar and wind. And under the partnership, ABB will supply vehicle to grid bidirectional kiosks in France, followed by installations here in the UK, Italy, Belgium and Germany. Uh, the 11 kilowatt charger, more light and uh, more compact than previous V to G chargers, is fully compatible with current and future EVs. They say, and uh, I, you know, I'd love one here, but they're just V to G chargers have been crazy expensive, and also I don't have a Leaf, and so you need Chadamo uh, for it. I would buy a Leaf 40 if I seriously had a little play with V2G. I know that Octopus Energy do have a V2G trial going on. Uh, Pay is equal power loop. I'll try and find out more information. Maybe do a Saturday special interview soon uh, with Octopus EV. Um, sadly, you need to be in the UK power networks area, and I miss it a little bit. I'm in Dorset, and it's mainly the sort of London and the southeast. But if you're interested, you can lease a car from them. You can lease a Leaf. I get a V2G charger, they'll pay you 30 quid a month for the privilege of doing it as well. All you got to do is plug your car in it and they'll dip into the battery when it's needed and pop it back in to the battery when it's not. Uh, and of course, you are then contributing to a big data gathering exercise for the rest of us. So that's your show for today. Thank you for listening to the podcast today and all of this week as well. And I welcome your feedback on the blog, which is evnewsdaily.com. You can leave a comment on any of the posts. On the blog posts, I read all of those, obviously on social media, on the YouTube comments. would love to hear from you uh, with what you think about the news this week and indeed the podcast itself. Always on a Friday, love to say a big thank you to our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, nationalcarcharging.com and alohacharge.com, Derek Riley, mentioned him earlier, from the EV Review Island YouTube channel, and Richard at rsimons.co.uk. They are the electric vehicle specialists, RSY. M-O-N-S. I like to do a bit of window shopping at least once a day on cars that uh, I would like in my driveway from them. Uh, hello to our partners, David and Lisa Allen, who listen to the podcast together. Uh, OEM Audio of New Zealand and evpower.co.nz for your accessories. Hello to Gareth Hamer. Uh, Jan is on tomorrow from E-Mobility Norway. Hello to Bob Boothby from the Millbrook Cottages, an elopement wedding venue. Hello to Darren. Now, Darren McCleskey from DeNovo Real Estate, a new partner of the show, along with Yuka Kukunen from Shift2Electric.com and Rajiv Narayan as well. Thank you, my friend. And a quick mention for all of our exec producers. Alan Robson, Alan Shedd, Alex Banahini, Alexander Frank, Anders Hove, Andrea Jefferson, Asir Khalid, uh, Ashley Hill, Bjard Fuchstack, Brian Thompson, Bruce Bohannon, Charles Hall, Chris Hopkins, Colin Hennessy and Cam Zivu. Craig Coles, Craig Rogers, Damian Davis, Darren Fetch, Dave Jusen, David Finch, David Moore, David Partington, David Prescott, and Don McAllister at screencastsonline.com. Eru Kyuni Nyombi, Frederick Rovick, Gene Rubin, Gilberto Rosado, Jeff Lowe, Headley Wright, and Ian Griffiths. Ian Sear, Ian Watty Watkins, and Jack Oakley. James Storr, Jim Morris, John, who is Beardy McBeardface and runs Kent EVs. John Manchak, Juan Gonzalez, Ken Morris, Kevin Mess, and Carl Mann, Lars Dallager, Lawrence D. Allen, and Lee Brown. Luke Cully, Marcel Ward, Mark Bossett, Marty Young, Matt Piscioni, Mia Oppelstrop, and Michael Pastroni. Mike Winter, Nathan Gore Brown, Neely Robertson, Sussex EVs, uh, Nicholas Miller, Nigel Miles, Ahead Aston, Paul Ridings, Paul Stevenson, Pete Glass, Pete Gordon, Peter and D. Roberts at Oxen EVs, Phil Mouche, Philip Troutman, Raj Badwell, Rene Kimmick, Rene Schneider, Richard Lupinski, Rob Hermans, Rob from the RS Thinks EV YouTube channel, Rupert Mitchell, Saiki Payne, Stephen Penn, Steve John, Thomas Jotias, Todd Oaks, The Plug Seeker, and his EV YouTube channel, which is brilliant. Uh, Tim Gutteridge and William Langhorn. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the Saturday special tomorrow, uh, whatever you're up to. Hopefully uh, some nice autumnal weather, if that is indeed the season you are in. Have a good one. I'll catch you Monday. Oh, do remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.